This tutorial is an introduction to conic sections. A conic section is just the shape that's created when you intersect a cone with a flat plane. Imagine an ice cream cone and a piece of paper sliding through the center of an ice cream cone. The shape where those two objects touch is different depending on how the plane passes through the cone or what angle the plane passes through the cone. Possible shapes that we can form by intercepting a plane in a cone is a parabola or a circle or an ellipse or the shape that we call a hyperbola. The first type of conic section that we're going to talk about is the circle. Imagine that this double cone had a line that we could see that passed through the center of it, or we could see the axis of these two double cones. Now if the plane that we used to cut our cone was perpendicular to this axis, then the shape that would be formed from the intersection of these two objects would be a circle. Or if we looked straight on to this cutting plane, or straight down through the two cones, we can see where they intersect is a circle. So if I was looking straight on this plane and I saw my circle, I could imagine a coordinate axis on that circle. Then if I took that coordinate axis and that circle that I saw and I drew it on a graph, it would look something like this. Here we have the graph of a circle and the equation of this circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to 16. Now this circle has its center at the origin. And the equation of every circle that has its center at the origin can be written in this standard form. x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. r is the radius of our circle. That means that every point on this circle is r units away from the center. This particular circle, x squared plus y squared is equal to 16, well 16 you can think of as 4 squared or r squared, and that would mean that r is equal to 4. And notice that if we're at the center, we intercept our x-axis at 4 and negative 4, and our y-axis at 4 and negative 4. Also notice that this circle is symmetrical through this center. I can draw an axis of symmetry in any angle or any direction, and as long as it passes through the center, our circle is symmetrical across it. Now the last thing we have to discuss is the domain and range of this circle, because circles have very limited domain and range. The domain is any value of x that we can plug into our equation that will satisfy this equation and provide us with an answer for y. Well, we can tell from this circle that the only values of x that are going to get us a y value are the values of x between negative 4 and 4. So our domain then is that x has to be between negative 4 and 4. Now let's look at our range values. If we're going to plug in values between negative 4 and 4 for x, what kind of y values would we end up with if we solve this equation? Well again, we can tell from our graph that the only y values that will come out of this equation are the y values between negative 4 and 4. So our range values then are that y has to be between negative 4 and 4. Now the next conic section that we're going to talk about is the ellipse. Imagine that we took this plane that we made our circle with and we tilted it up a little bit. So we cut the cone at an angle. Well again, if we were looking straight on our plane and that plane cut our cone with an angle, then what we would be looking at where these two shapes intersect, that would look like a stretched circle or an ellipse. 
So if my plane is cutting my cone at an angle, and I'm looking down at my plane, and I see the shape of an ellipse, well then again, I can draw a coordinate axis on this ellipse. Then, if I took this ellipse and this coordinate axis that I see, and I drew it on a graph, it would look something like this. This example ellipse here has the equation 4x squared plus 25y squared is equal to 100. Now this ellipse also has its center at the origin, and every ellipse that has its center at the origin, well, its equation can be written in this standard form. x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. a and b are just constant values, they're numbers, and they describe the stretching of this ellipse. Now this ellipse looks like a stretched circle, but unlike a circle, the ellipse only has two axes of symmetry. They are the x-axis and the y-axis. So our ellipse is symmetrical across both of these axes. Now the last thing we have to talk about is the domain and range of this ellipse. Like the circle, the domain and range of an ellipse is very restricted. The domain is any x values that can be plugged into this equation and that will get us a y value. In this example, the x values, well they range between negative 5 and positive 5. The range values or the y values for this ellipse, well they range between negative 2 and positive 2. Now the equation that we're given for this example ellipse, this 4x squared plus 25y squared is equal to 100, this is not written in standard form. But looking at this we could still tell that this was an ellipse because both the x squared and the y squared terms. Because both x and y are both squared, that means this has to be either a circle or an ellipse or a hyperbola. But because the coefficients are different in front of our x and y terms, but they're both the same sign, then I can tell that this is an ellipse. Another way to identify this would be to divide everything by 100. This equation would become x squared over 25 plus y squared over 4, and that would be equal to 1. So now let's look at our next conic section. The next section that we're going to talk about is the parabola. The parabola is created when our plane that cuts through our cone is parallel to the edge of the cone. When that happens, the shape we have is that of a parabola. Now if I was looking at my plane that's cutting through my cone, and I see the shape of a parabola, well then once again I can draw a coordinate axis on that shape I see. Then if I took this shape, this parabola, and this coordinate axis and I drew them, it would look something like this. Here we have the parabola y is equal to x squared. Now you may have talked about parabolas if you've studied quadratic equations, but when we talk about a parabola as a conic section, if that parabola has its vertex at the origin, then it has the standard form of x squared is equal to 4py or y squared is equal to 4px, depending if the parabola opens in the y or x directions. Now some textbooks also write this standard form a little bit different. Sometimes they write it as y is equal to 1 over 4c times x squared, or if your parabola opens in the x direction, then it would be x is equal to 1 over 4c times y squared. These two sets of standard equations are exactly the same. In this case, p is equal to c. And p and c are just constant 
or just numbers, that describe the shape of this graph. I recommend memorizing one or the other of these sets of standard equations, depending on what your textbook uses. Now you may realize from studying parabolas earlier that a parabola only has one axis of symmetry. This axis of symmetry passes through the origin in this example parabola, but in all parabolas it passes through the vertex. And as our parabola opens, it is symmetrical across this axis. The domain and range for our parabola is very different from that of an ellipse or a circle. The domain in this case is all the possible x values that can be plugged into this equation. But there are no restrictions on the x values that can be plugged into y is equal to x squared. So our domain is that x can be all real numbers. Our range is a little bit different. The y values that we can get out of this equation are limited at our vertex. In this case, our vertex is at the origin. So the origin, or y is equal to zero, is the lowest or smallest y value that we can have for this parabola. So our range then would be that y has to be greater than or equal to zero. Now the last conic section that we're going to talk about is the hyperbola. Imagine that our plane was parallel to the axis of our two cones. But since it doesn't pass through that axis, then it cuts each cone, and each cone forms kind of a half of an ellipse we end up with a shape like this. This shape is called the hyperbola. So again, if I was looking straight on my plane, and I could see it cut through both of these cones, and I see the shape of the hyperbola, I could imagine a coordinate axis on this plane. Then if I took this plane and this shape that I see, and this coordinate axis that I have, and I put it on a graph, it would look something like this. This graph that we're given here is the hyperbola and has the equation x squared minus 4y squared is equal to 4. Now again, this hyperbola has its center at the origin. And all hyperbolas that have their center at the origin have the standard equation x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. Again, a and b are just numbers or constant values that describe the shape of the parabola. This equation that we're given as an example is not written in standard form, but we can still tell that this is a hyperbola because again, our x and our y are both squared. But this time, unlike the ellipse or the circle, the coefficients for my x squared and y squared terms our opposite sign. Notice that this standard form equation is just like this equation of an ellipse, except here we're subtracting instead of adding. So it's that subtraction that clues us in that this is a hyperbola. Now like an ellipse, our hyperbola has two axes of symmetry. In this example, our axis of symmetries are the y-axis and the x-axis. Now the last thing we have to discover is the domain and range of this hyperbola. Because our x-squared and our y-squared terms are being subtracted, this domain is very different than any of the other domains for any of the other conic sections. Looking at this graph, our domain is restricted but x values that go out to negative infinity are all acceptable. So are x values that go out to infinity. The only x values that we cannot plug into this equation are between negative 2 and 2. So our domain then would be that x has to be less than or equal to negative 2 or 
x has to be greater than or equal to 2. Now the range value of this hyperbola is all the acceptable y values. Well as x gets very very large or very very small, our y values get either very big or very small. And there is no y value that we cannot plug into this equation and get an acceptable x value. So our range then is that y is all real numbers. So that covers all four of our conic sections and that completes this introduction to conic sections.